Hey guys, it's Nemo, and welcome to today's video. We are today we are featuring the USS Gearing. Now the Gearing is, let's say she's a staple of World of Warships. She's one of the oldest destroyers in the game, and even though there's been a lot of power creep and you have things like the Harugumo now and even the Kitakaze which faces this quite a lot and you've got the new Royal Navy line which has very fast firing guns the gearing is still one of the best in fact I think that the gearing and the Yu Yang would be the two destroyers that are the best overall. Overall at their job, they are the best destroyers. But anyway, today we're here featuring the gearing. So this map is a, a rough map for destroyers when you come this side, this flank, because of this channel here. Now as you can see I'm pinging the map on the Shimakaze there, because the Shimakaze should be out on the 1-2 line in this map. The, the, this game mode, I really don't like standard battle game mode, because a lot of destroyer captains don't actually know what they are supposed to do in this game mode. But the Shima shouldn't be coming here, there's already a destroyer over here, he should be going wide and spotting for the team. Now I'm going wide here on this corner because if I go all the way out wide to the 9-10 line I'm already taking myself out of the battle early on. But I'm going wide because there at the E7 mark is where a lot of radar cruisers hang out. That's a great place for a Des Moines, a Worcester, uh, Moskva, whatever else has radar. So I'm going to torp over there early on because I know that there's probably going to be a radar cruiser heading over there. We saw that there was already a Des Moines Worcester in the game and in Baltimore so we want to get some preemptive torps over just to keep an eye out on that spot and then the Des Moines pops up, what do you know, and I get spotted. So. The only thing that can spot me without me spotting because it's a gearing Shima on both sides would be the Shima. So I open fire. The guns on the gearing are very good, 127mm guns. You can get them firing at 2.7 seconds, which is quite fast. And at 127mm, you don't need to run IFHE because you can penetrate the armor of all low tier destroyers, uh, all high tier destroyers, sorry with these guns with a uh, high explosive. So we want to force him away but we want to make sure that we stay close enough that our team can still see everyone else. So the torpedoes there were quite a good spread. Unfortunately they didn't kill the Des Moines but they have forced the Des Moines away. If you're not, you know, a wall of skill, if you're not going to kill anything with it, forcing them away is just as good. So now I know that the shimmers there in panic he's turned away because he was getting shot at which is probably the right thing to do, drop smoke and run so what I have to be careful of now is torpedoes coming from the Shima so I've slowed down I'm keeping a spot on that Des Moines for the rest of my team and I, I'm pinging him to make sure that my team can fire at him I'm not going to go too close just in case he has radar and I don't want to go too fast in case the Shima has launched torpedoes so now that's done, the RPF is pointing towards that Musashi, but we know that the Shimakaza left up that way, so we want to go and hunt down the enemy destroyer for our team. But we don't want to overextend, because this island area where I am is quite dangerous for destroyer players. So, a little bit of caution is always what's necessary. Now one thing I like about the, the gearing is that it does have relatively competitive stealth at 5.9 kilometers. Now, it's not the best. Yu Yang has got 5.8 uh, and there are tier 9s and tier 8s which have 5.5 and 5.7 and the Shimakaza has 5.6. But in this this mid-range area about around the 6 kilometers 6 kilometers is, is really rough and you notice the difference between 5.9 and 6 kilometers. it's incredible. Now I shouldn't have fired there because the Masashi was watching me and so was an, a cruiser which I couldn't see. Now, I wanted to try and bait the Ibuki and I, I paid for it with a slap from that Masashi. 
the torpedoes up there they don't look like they're going to hit anything but they have now stopped the Musashi in his tracks and the Ibuki is still coming around so it's time to leg it and get out of there Now one good thing about the the guns on the, the gearing being 127mm and being able to fire so fast is that you can hurt cruisers quite well and even high tier battleships because you can punch through their armour on their superstructure which most battleships have 19mm of armour on the superstructure and the 127mm guns can hit through that quite easily. So here I start opening fire on the Ibuki because I figure I'm safe and then all of a sudden you know, one, two, three ships start targeting me so I thought oh, I better stop and just get out of there luckily for me the Seattle has a good shot there I noticed the torpedoes over there and I know that the Shima has gone out this way and I sort of figured he would have gone that way without because I wasn't spotted by him uh, while hanging around in that area and I do get slapped again by the Musashi and it, th there's a, there is a nerf coming to battleship AP on destroyer captains where AP shells only do 10% of the damage uh, personally I think they should just leave it uh, I made a couple of mistakes there where I openly fired and probably shouldn't have and I paid the price for it you, know, you have to be able to pay the price for your mistakes in the game otherwise you're never going to learn so good thing about RPF here is I know now where the shimmer is. You also like keep your eye eye out on the mini map. I know that there's a an enemy ship waiting up there to protect him, obviously. So we have to be careful of that. And he's stuck on the border, and he starts smoking up. And, but don't let smoke. Don't let uh, ships that smoke up stop you. Always try to fire at ships in smoke because then they will stop firing. Usually they'll go quiet and they won't won't shoot anymore. Uh, Minotaur captains especially hate it when you fire <laughs> at them in their smoke. And see, as you can see, I'm getting shots here on where I, I quickly spotted him, so I'm just going to keep firing at him. Even though I can't see him, I want to get as many shots on there as I can. It's going to force him to run, which he's already doing, and it's going to force people who sit in the smoke a lot to stop firing. And once they stop firing, then they're no more threat to your team, which is what you want. Now, it's, it's late game. They're down four ships. We've got a lot of points. I, I still don't know what our Shima Kaza is doing. As you can see, I just ping the Shima and tell him he should be out there spotting for the team, for the... Uh, protecting them against the gearing. Now I know that the Shimakaze can't gun down the gearing but he can outspot the gearing and will be able to help his ships see torpedoes as well and that's what you want to do. You want to get out there and, and make sure that nothing is going to kill your capital ships. If you don't know what you're rolling as a destroyer I have a, a video called, uh, I've got four of them actually called What Is My Roll? and then the first one is destroyers so even though this game mode is difficult you've still got to get out and spot for your team you've still got to be able to protect them from torpedoes the other thing there I was just when I was just checking the, the ships on the enemy team I was checking the clans as well uh, Fanta uh, at the moment they're a hurricane clan which is the top clans on the on the server and so uh, CW so I try to make sure I keep an eye on uh, what clans I'm facing when I play a game to know what I'm going to need to be able to do how difficult is that game going to be uh, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on on the clan players so then you, you have that information, it's just a bit more information to give you to, to know whether you're going to be in a struggle or whether you're going to have a good ally. So now we want to get out ahead, we saw our Yamato got obliterated by the Shima earlier, there's no more problem on this side from any destroyer because we can see that the gearing is now spotted in the middle and hopefully the team can get rid of him and that'll protect them from 
any more torpedo strikes. So my job now, end of the game, is just get up there and spot. As you can see, my spotting damage is already far exceeding my actual damage. It's up at, what, 72,000 spotting damage, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, there's no rewards for spotting damage in World of Warships, unlike World of Tanks. But hopefully that's something they can implement later on. So we launched some torpedoes out to the <laughs> the bunch of them out there, hopefully because they're going to be fired at quite a lot. They're going to be turning around and wanting to go back. So you want to torpedo to where they are going to be forced by the rest of your team. If I had have tried to lead on the um, the Masashi here, he wasn't going to be hanging he wasn't going to be going in that direction for a long time because the amount of fire here that you can see is going to force all your ships back so you want to torpedo out towards where they're going to be forced away. Torpedoes aren't always the fastest although um, you can get the gearing torps if you run the torpedo acceleration to a 71 knots and that's quite quite fast for torpedoes. So I've slowed down here uh, waiting for the torp hits and then I smoke up and I start firing. I know that the Masashi started flooding so we want to get a fire on him and notice I'm reversing in, in the smoke because I've still got 18 seconds left on my bloom and I want to make it as big as I can but not only that as I don't want to sit still in the smoke in case I get smoke fired. It's all good that we can practice smoke firing and, and get rid of enemies that way but remember <laughs> players can do the same thing to you so I want to keep moving around in the smoke and keep an eye on who's out there what, you know, who's near us because we don't want that to happen to us. So we're trying to set a fire on the end here. It has it's been a pretty good game from our team even though we've lost a couple of ships at the end here. And now my my usual advice in this situation would be to go straight for the cap. Now always, I, I like objective play, I always uh, preach about playing the objective. The only reason I didn't in this is because it's, what, 9? Nine, 9 on 1 and he's got almost no health. So our Shima, who should have been on the other side, <laughs> is finally up in the battle here. Uh, at least he's spotting, but I think that I've spotted that guy anyway. So, I thought it was going to be quite a low damage game, uh, but the, the spotting was high, which was good. Uh, in the end, we got, got some lucky stuff there. We got some damage and some torpedo hits and a kill on that Masashi, which was always good. Okay, so the other good thing uh, about the gearing is that even though she's fat and slow she can be quite maneuverable but you've got to be if you if you are struggling with maneuverability I'd say take the steering gears mod and she'll turn a lot faster so not bad this is my first battle of the day uh, and I got the win bonus which was good so there's the fight nearly what 5200 odd XP which is always nice to get because we didn't f uh, have any caps, if I had been able to get caps, um, I would have finished up near 3, 2, 1. But in the top 5 is always pretty good, especially in a game mode where you're not getting the um, cap bonus as well. So let's go through and have a look at the gearing, what we run. We always run premium consumables. Uh, you know, extra smoke extra engine boost or um, defensive fire if that's what you like to run. Anyway, so we have main armaments mod 1 to protect our guns and torpedo tubes. Magazine modification 1 will work. Uh, if you don't like, if you don't have enough flags for like the Juliet Charlie flags, but I always run the, the main armaments mod because your torpedo tubes and your guns can get knocked out quite easily. We have Propulsion Mod 1 because the last thing you want to do in the DD is lose your engine. So this second skill for destroyers is pretty much mandatory. 
I'm running the aiming systems mod uh, to get my torpedoes to traverse a little bit quicker. The AA guns would be okay if you want to. If you're in an AA division, you're running with an aircraft carrier lot. Uh, run the AA extended firing range. The main battery I'm not running because I think the the guns reload quick enough as it is anyway. So I run the propulsion mod too, uh, so I can get forward and backwards quick enough in those smokes. As I said, if you are having trouble with maneuverability and sluggishness, run the steering gears. It might help. Bread and butter of the gearing concealment system modification one. You want to get that down as low as you can with this build and the uh, captain skill you can get that with the camos you can get that down to 5.9 now I run the torpedo boost the AA guns mod would be good if you're running a AA build and so would the uh, main battery now Juliet Charlie is our main flag that you want to run Sierra Mike for a little bit more speed and November Foxtrot to get those consumables reloading a little faster they're the three basic flags you want to run and then all of course your consumables now the torpedoes on the, the gearing hit really really hard and so the faster we can have them reload the better that's why I run the torpedo module there uh, captain skills we got priority target as you saw it was good and handy to know who was firing it or how many were firing at me preventative maintenance would also work as your first skill your second captain skill on destroyers always last stand it's no it's non-negotiable you need that uh, then I run the survivability expert for a bit more health especially with gunfighting and as you saw it helped me out quite a lot there when I took two penetrations from or over penetrations from the Masashi and then concealment expert because 5.9 as I said is as low as you can get down with everything I'm running AR on this ship yes it's it's viable although I would start to not think so on destroyers torpedo arm and expertise because you want to reload those torpedoes they are hard hitting they are the best in the game and then I'm running RPF so I know for to protect my my capital ship so I can use RPF to find out what's close enough uh, other skills that you could run would be a superintendent, extra smoke, extra engine boost, or defensive fire. The basic firing train training would be handy as well. It gives you an extra a buff on your 127 millimeter guns to make them fire faster. Torpedo accel sorry acceleration is handy too. If you run the uh, 16 and a half kilometer torpedoes, they go down to 13.2, but they they got 71 knots. And the jack of all trades is always handy to try and run those consumables over a lot quicker. So, all in all, a really good ship. And as you can see, I have 1.1 million XP in it. If you if you like your destroyers, gearing, and the Yu Yang, I watch you run. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you next time. Enemy destroyer blown up.